Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this one. I want to thank Buck Rocker for coming up with this idea. I think it's a great idea for a simple video. I think this will help a lot of people out. Uh, a big question is what frequency should I use when I'm fishing? You know, uh, fish finders today have a, a whole range of uh, options now. Frequencies, high chirp, medium chirp, low chirp, and everything else in between, not like it used to be, you know? So there's a lot of confusion and I understand. I mean, if you talk to a dealer or, you know, online, it's very hard to find exactly what people recommend. There's just not a whole lot out there. So everything that I've learned over the years, being a tester for Simrad and Airmar, I've learned a few things, striper fishing mainly. Now when I striper fish, I don't go very deep. So if you're, you know, a guy who fishes like for swordfish, thousand feet, 2000 feet, stuff like that, this may not help you, but it might. It might, because I'm going to keep it real simple and very basic. This is an old chart I had, I did uh, doing a chirp sonar video. It's kind of beat up and stuff, but I think it would be good for this one. I'm going to keep it as short as possible. Most uh, out-of-the-box transducers, like three-in-ones or, you know, anything where you have everything built into one transducer, you're going to have the options of a high, high chirp or 200 kilohertz, a medium chirp or 83. Some of the older ones will have a 200 or a 50. Now, whenever I say high, medium, or low, high means high chirp, medium and low chirp, of course. But high chirp usually floats around 200 kilohertz, depending on what model transducer. There's all kinds of different models and configurations, but this is probably gonna be right for 99% of you guys out there. So the high frequency range will be you know right around 200 with a chirp transducer it's probably gonna be like 150 to 250 something like that medium is gonna be right around 83 kilohertz but it all of course it's gonna go lower and higher if it's chirp low will be around 50 kilohertz but it's gonna be lower and higher if it's chirp so I have a little band up here I can put on here to show you the, the chirp frequencies as well but let's start with single most people are gonna use single right that's what most uh, inexpensive transducers have so 200 kilohertz is in the high zone right there for most fishing that's going to be great the advantages to high is it's a very narrow cone usually uh, now because these frequencies are, are coupled with a cone it doesn't mean that this frequency makes this cone it just usually means that that's the way they're built that's just a characteristic of the transducer a 200 kilohertz high range uh, transducer usually has a narrow cone it doesn't mean that this uh, frequency makes it a narrow cone. It just means they both exist together, okay? So with high or 200 kilohertz, you're going to have more of a narrow cone usually. This means you have very good detail on the bottom. It picks up every little bump. But you have a very narrow cone, so you're not going to find suspended fish as easily. Because the closer to the surface, the closer to the cone or, or the transducer, it gets very narrow up here and it's hard to mark those fish, especially if you're sitting still and moving slowly. Moving to medium, it's usually a wider cone, right around the 83 kilohertz area, uh, which is very good for running on plane looking for suspended fish. Because you have that wider cone, you can catch those targets easy, but you're going to lose some detail on the bottom. These are good for shallower areas in the high. The medium is good for slightly deeper and the lower uh, are good for the deepest waters you're going to fish. So moving from 83 in the medium area to our low area in the 50 kilohertz usually means a very wide cone. Now a very wide cone is excellent for marking suspended fish, especially if you're running and scouting. Detail on the bottom is pretty bad though. Uh, it's kind of hard to you know, uh, decipher that detail when it's covering such a large area. So you may go over a hump and drop off and it may show it almost flat sometimes. But you're gonna see all kinds of suspended fish because you're looking at such a big area. Now, the biggest mistake I see, and I'm telling you, I dealt with some commercial tuna fishermen who are the top of their game and they got this one wrong and it's very common. And it's easy to see why it's an easy mistake to make. Uh, some people think that a narrower cone is better for deeper water because the cone is narrower and we're thinking, well, it's narrow, so it's concentrated, so it must travel deeper. The cone has nothing to do with how deep it works. It's all in the frequencies. So you may look at a 50 and say, look how wide that cone is. It probably doesn't go very deep. It has nothing to do with the cone. It's all about the frequencies. I talked to the people at Aramar. 
and that's exactly what they say. Say, Mike, it has nothing to do with the cone. The frequency is what makes it work deeper, better. Actually, Simrad just posted up a video. It's really pretty cool. These guys are sword fishing. I'll put a link to it in the video. I'll put it right, right here, the link, if you want to check it out. And in that link, they have high and low chirp, high and low frequencies working right next to each other on one screen. And although the high worked uh, in like a thousand feet or more, it didn't show swordfish. The low showed those swordfish. So uh, it's a pretty cool little video to check out. Now for the guys using chirp, this may help just a little bit. Now keep, keep in mind this does vary again from transducer to transducer. I'm trying to keep it simple. I don't want to use big crazy terms that even I half understand, you know. But I yeah, put up the, the, the bar here to change everything to chirp. So if you're in chirp, everything still is the same, okay? In your high, this is what was was 200 kilohertz. That's the range you would have. That's the bandwidth you would have if you're using Chirp with this brand, the transducer. They may change to your brand. This is the 83 fixed frequency, but in a Chirp transducer, you'll have a choice of 83 or medium Chirp, which will be a band somewhere in these numbers. And here is the low Chirp or the 50 kilohertz area. And in low chirp, you get a bandwidth in these numbers here. So the biggest difference between chirp and fixed frequency is you get a band of frequencies, a bandwidth, versus one particular frequency in 50. In medium, you get a bandwidth here, medium chirp. If it was a fixed frequency of 83, you'd get just 83. And in the high chirp, you get a band of these frequencies. If it was a fixed frequency, it would be 200. So if you get like a, a a high chirp transducer and it's high chirp only you'll get a choice of high chirp or 200 if you get a medium chirp transducer you'll see a choice of medium or 83 if you get a low chirp transducer you'll get a choice of low chirp or 50 they always coincide together if you get a three and one they come with medium and high or medium or high so you'll have medium or high chirp and a choice of 83 kilohertz or 200 Low, you'll almost never use if you're your average sport fisherman unless you're going extremely deep. So for most fishermen, it's gonna be medium high if you're fishing at less than 600 feet, let's just say. Doesn't mean 600 feet, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. So if you're running on plane and you're scouting looking for fish, I love medium chirp or 83 kilohertz. And if I'm bottom fishing, say I'm looking for a specific edge of a drop off within a few feet and I need to know exactly where it is, say I'm fishing on a wreck, I want to use high chirp or 200 kilohertz for that. If I'm not looking for a specific piece on the bottom, I'm going to stay in medium or 83 all the time. There is an exception to the rule with fixed cone transducers. I have one. It is a 200 kilohertz or a high wide chirp. Now what they've done is with this particular transducer, uh, let's see the TM165 hot, uh, super wide is one of them. The B175 wide is one of them, and the uh, TM185 high is one of them. I, I've had all of them, and uh, they're all fantastic transducers, and they're all fixed at a wide cone. So what they did with these wide transducers, they took the frequency of the high bandwidth for chirp, which is this bandwidth here, or 200 kilohertz fixed, and they've given it a wide cone no matter what. So in the uh, 175 wide, high wide, and the 185 high wide, I believe it's 25 degree cone. It may be 20, but I believe it's 25. It's a nice wide cone all the time. And I believe the 165 is a 29 degree cone, but I'm not sure exactly. I'll put everything in the uh, description there and I'll put you know all the links to all these if you guys want to check them out. Uh, all I know is the 165 is definitely wider than the, the regular high wides. It's like a super wide or extra wide. So in those cases, it's always going to be wide. And that's what's kind of cool about these transducers, uh, the high wides. If you're, if you're a shallow water fisherman, say less than 100 feet, those wide, super wide cones are awesome for finding fish. You're not going to have the exact same detail on the bottom, like I said, but if you're looking for fish and scouting all the time, those wides are really, really killer transducers. Now, as far as deciding when to use chirp or when to use your fixed frequency, like when to use medium or when to use 83, that's up to you. The reason I say that is every transducer is different. I've been on some boats where a medium chirp performs unbelievably. And I switched to 83 and it looks pretty crappy. 
And I've had to do the abs absolute opposite, especially when you're dealing with these shallower waters. So if uh, you have that choice of high chirp or 200, play with both. Uh, chances are chirp will be a little bit better for you, but if you're fishing very shallow, 20 foot, 15 foot a lot, maybe a largemouth bass fisherman, a crappy fisherman, something like that, uh, you might want the fixed frequency. So uh, I urge you to definitely try both, play with both. All right, guys, I hope I kept it simple enough for you. In the end of the day, we're all just fishermen. We're hunting out there to be electrical engineers and memorize all this stuff, you know. We just want to catch more fish and use our equipment to the best of its ability. Please, in the comments, put any question you may have, I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't. And definitely, please give a thumbs up to this video. You guys have no idea how that helps me out. And it keeps me in the position to make more videos. Uh, the algorithm and all that stuff on YouTube is so bad these days. A lot of guys are really struggling. And uh, some videos do... I'm mean, just doing all kinds of crazy things and a thumbs up really helps me out. It only takes a second. I would really appreciate it. Remember, good juju on the water goes a long way. So a thumbs up will help you with that. I promise you. Please stay safe on the water. Leave a few for me. Love you. Mean it.